Hey friends, <clears throat> I just wanted to share with you um, uh, the B and beekeeping station that we have here at Bee Week. We have four different learning stations that we bring the kids through. They learn about how beeswax is made and they make candles. They learn about bee habitat and they make these little model habitats with food, water, and shelter for um, tunnel nesting bees and ground nesting bees and honey bees. And they also um, uh, learn all about honey and learn how to taste honey like a pro with the UC Davis pollination wheel. Um, and this is the bee and beekeeping station, which is a really cool one. I just wanted to show you some of the stuff we have going on here. So these are the objectives that we have at this learning station. Identify two species as bees, identify three parts of bee anatomy, feel comfortable around bees in the outdoors, and explain the organization of honeybees and identify the different bees in their role in the hive. So um, I'll just show you how we do each of those things. So identify two species of bees. Um, for that, we have these two handy dandy teaching tools. Um, one is this great poster that we got from the Pollinator Partnership. Um, I think this one was from 2012 or 2013, um, but everyone, it's their, I think probably their most popular poster. So they'll do runs of it every once in a while. And it just is a cool way to show kids that there's more than just honeybees. There's thousands of species of bees here in the U.S. besides just honeybees. Um, and uh, other supplementary learning things is we have this really cool um, little packet from the Montana Pollinator Education Project that I think is from Montana Department of Ag. And it's just got all sorts of different pollinators with really cool things on the back all about them. Um, and obviously we have used this to death. It is um, shredded. Um, and then also I have my uh, part of my collection from my uh, my native bee and there's honeybees, there's bumblebees, there's a couple of jewel wasps, there's all sorts of cool things in here. So um, they can use this as a reference when they go out in the field, which is right here. And they use these, um, these are just empty peanut butter jars that you can save, they're plastic, um, so nothing gets broken and no kids get um, a cut, but um, you can save these or you can just get them on Amazon. Um, and we just take kids out right out here into the um, field. There's lavender blooming, there's poppies, there's some erodium. Um, you can notice that there's also beehives right here. We've never, we've been running this program I think for four years now and we have 300 kids every um, once a year come out for over the span of a week to visit us and we never have issues with honeybees or bee stings. Um, we just tell them to stay away from the front of the hive and we draw an imaginary line right there so that um, they don't walk right in front of the hive. But um, how you get kids to catch bees is super, super easy. Um, and I've been doing this again. I think we've reached like over 14,000 kids with our program at this point and I've never had an issue. So you find a little bee. Here's one right there. And you just put the, um, you put the um, jar right over the top of her and then like ever so slightly, um, just lift that up and she'll fly up. And then you put the bottom on the bottom of the jar. Obviously I'm missing a hand so I can't do that. But that way you don't destroy the flower and you can catch the bee and then they can take a really close look at it and look at her, the wax glands in her abdomens which they learn about and all sorts of stuff. They can bring the bee over to the collection and see if they can identify what kind of a bee it is. We mostly catch honeybees and sweat bees and bumblebees, um, but they'll catch other things too. Um, so they, this, they love this. I, uh, I do this for Take Your Kid to Work Day for the Oregon Department of Agriculture, or um, excuse me, the Oregon Department of Transportation Project I work on. Um, and we have kids out there for an hour and a half. They just don't want to leave. They love catching bees. And again, I've never, ever, ever had a problem. Um, and then to let them out, usually you just shake the jar, <laughs> give it a little shake, and they fly away. Easy peasy. Um, so, back over here. Um, so, uh, where did my learning objectives go? 
Next is um, identify three parts of the anatomy. So we, we used to have three microscopes, one of them broke, so now we just have two. Um, but we have these, um, I got these microscopes from, um, they came from a kid's education, uh, science education um, catalog, and I have had them for seven years, and I don't even remember where I got them, but um, they work really well. <laughs> It's my field lab, and this is the serial number, MFL06, um, or product number or whatever, and we've had them forever. They work really well. So here's a little hack to get kids. They love turning these knobs on the, um, on the microscopes, and they'll crack slides, and they unfocus the microscopes, and it's just super frustrating. Like, it's almost a full-time job just getting the kids not to touch these. So just take packing tape and <laughs> and tape the knobs down and that way they can't touch them or turn them and they stay in focus the whole time and you don't have to worry about it. Um, we also have, so, and in here there's a, so you can pull off all sorts of parts of bees, which I've already deceased and put them on slides. Um, there's an antenna in here and I try and get them to count the wings, the antenna segments. And in here's there's, um, uh, wing and it's this is a honeybee wing and she has fuzz on her wing so it's really cool for them to see that honeybee wings are are fuzzy um, and then I have this little thing that I made um, it's just uh, this is from a again I've no idea, I don't remember where I got this it's just a uh, two pages of a of a kid's book that have the different um, uh, parts of a bee uh, and I just took it to the print shop and I blew it up and I um, had them laminate it and then we laminated these and so they can just guess what the different parts of the honey bee are um, and what they do um, and uh, and then we also have these are it's the end of bee week it's the last day so these are all smashed but I had all sorts of different bees in here there's a usura longhorn bee there's a decapitated <laughs> all of the things, uh, honeybee in there. There's a jewel wasp right here. And we have these little loops. Um, I got them from, uh, if you just Google the private eye, you have to get them from this kid's place. You can't just get them um, on Amazon. But, and they are a little spindy, but they're awesome. And they're really good for little, tiny kid, like littler kids that can't figure out microscopes. Um, and they do a great job of blowing everything up and you can see the toes and all the different parts of the bee anatomy which is really cool um uh next learning objective is feel comfortable around bees in the outdoors obviously we do that by having them catch bees and see that bees aren't scary um and then explain the organization of bees and identify their role in the hive so we have a talk earlier in the day where i tell kids um what all the different worker bees do and what the queen bee does and what the drones do. So then they come to the observation hive and we have them not just look at the bees, which they absolutely love, of course. One other thing I love to do with kids, this is getting all foggy, um, is have them touch the hive because it'll always be warm. They keep that brood around 90, 90, between 90 and 92 degrees, I think. Um, and so, um, and uh, and so it's warm. And so when they touch the glass of the observation hive, it really connects for them that this is a living animal. Um, and, and they really love that. So have them touch the hive. Um, and then also just have them see if they can pick out the different jobs in the hive that the bees are doing. So of course, uh, there's a queen in here so they can find the queen and have them tell you what she does. Um, there's drones in here. Here's a few drones hanging out right there have them look for the drones um, and then uh, and then with the different worker bees if there's uh, bees that are taking care of brood say hey what kind of bee is that is that a nurse bee they'll tell you it's a nurse bee because they're very smart and they know these things um, and etc etc if you um, get uh, bees that if you get forager bees they might be doing a waggle dance um, kind of another little hack for um, observation hives though is I try and get brood with nurse bees because that way they just stay right there they don't they're not interested in leaving the hive they just want to hang out with the brood and take care of the brood and keep the brood warm and um, when bees are fl if you just have a honey frame and a bunch of forager bees they're gonna be trying to get out of the hive and it's really disturbing for the kids to see the bees locked in there and trying to get out so um, 
I don't, I just, uh, I want the bees to look happy <laughs> so the kids um, don't feel sorry for them. And so a great way to do that is, um, is to uh, just have nurse bees taking care of brood and they all stay in there and they're happy. So, and then the other thing I want to point out too is we are trying really hard to be as inclusive as possible. We have um, a large Spanish speaking population in Southern Oregon and we have a lot of Spanish speaking kids and a lot of kids that actually don't have any English yet that come. So um, we want to make sure that we're reaching everyone at their level as, um, as we possibly can. So we made up all these little um, uh, extra stickers for uh, names of vocabulary words and um, in Spanish and English and we um, have a little passport that the kids take around as well and it has and then they take these home um, Felicia did this because she is brilliant and it has um, a glossary in the back somewhere and it has everything in there it is it has every um, kind of the main things too in um, both English and Spanish and um, for all of this, if you're like, oh gosh, I just didn't, I couldn't take notes. I don't know what exactly you're talking about or how do I do that or where do I buy that or how do I do the other stations? All of this is in the, um, the Kids and Bees handbook that I wrote. So you can um, go online to www.beegirl.org and check out our website and the Kids and Bees um, handbook is there and it has, we have a bilingual Spanish English version and we also have just the plain English version that has all of this stuff in there. So um, you can either download it for free or you can purchase it online if you want um, if you want a printed copy. So that is the Bees and Beekeeping Station at Bee Week and um, feel free to use our ideas and send me pictures and let me know what works for you.